Hey guys, it's Rod with Civil Advantage Firearms Training here. Um, finally, a normal video. <laughs> now, the fight with the reclassification of firearms and the Firearms Act in general in Canada is far from over, but you know we got to do a little bit of living in the interim. So I'm glad to be back doing a normal gun or gear review. So today we're going to do something kind of interesting. We're going to compare, if that's even possible, a red, green, blue dot sight from NC Star and a red green dot sight from the from Vortex, the Vortex Strike Fire. Now, if you're a Vortex fan, you know, before you start jumping up and down or what whatnot, uh, I am comparing the two as a complement to NC Star. So basically I'm using this Vortex Strike Fire as where NC Star wants to go, wants to be someday. So don't get me wrong. And I'm certainly not comparing uh, vortex down to, and you know, not no offense to the uh, NC Star guys, but down to an NC Star. Uh, and the reason I say that is NC Star, this this scope, which is supposed to be an equivalent to the Strike Fire or a better scope, uh, is substantially less than half the price. So uh, we understand what we're looking at here. So anyway, I do have some notes here today because I don't want to I don't want to forget anything. Uh, and before I get started, I have to thank the guys at Poco Military in Langley, British Columbia, for. Uh, providing this uh, the NC star scope here it's actually a pretty nice product and uh, again I really appreciate it so check out if you're in Langley uh, Poco military store they got a great store lots of uh, inventory uh, looks great in there check it out it's really good there's a link to their website uh, in the description box all right well let's get on with it so through this comparison we're gonna get kind of a product tour of both products so that's uh, that's the spin-off uh, uh, benefit of watching this video so as I mentioned, the NC Star uh, scope or optic is substantially less than half the price of the Vortex Strike Fire. So I think I paid this, I bought this myself, the Strike Fire, and I think I paid around 200 bucks Canadian for it. Um, and that's sort of the sweet spot price-wise for me. I don't buy a lot of the NC Star stuff as, uh, you know, uh, for myself. Uh, but at the same time, I'm not going to shell out 1500 bucks for an ACOG or something, right? I'm not being deployed anywhere. It's just not... You know, I just don't have to do it. What am I using these these types of things for? I'm doing some running gun at the range with my buddies and doing some training. So again, I'm not being deployed. I'm not worried about that level of um, equipment. But at the same time, I don't buy the least expensive stuff either. As uh, somebody said to me once, buy once, cry once. <laughs> so anyway, that's why I kind of stick with this uh, mid-range stuff. All right, function. Both of these optics are designed to do the same thing, which is for binocular shooting, relatively cl close range. So keeping both eyes open, there's a red or a green dot. In the case of the NC Star, you got a blue as well, and the blue is actually pretty cool. Um, both eyes open, binocular shooting, see the blue or red or green dot, put the dot on the target and shoot. So there's no magnification, nothing. It's just a, a sighting system. So they both have the same sort of goal. Um, and uh, let's talk about mounts. So the mounting on both of these are, in my opinion, equivalent. Uh, they are both super sturdy. They ha there's six screw mounts uh, up top here and a, a one main lug uh, down at the bottom where, where it's attached to the receiver. Now, the only difference here, they're both machined aluminum. They're equivalent in, co in quality in every way, I'll tell you that for sure. Uh, the difference between the NC Star one is it's a cantilever. So a cantilever actually gives you a little bit more control there if you want to mount this thing away from your face quite a ways and have it hanging you know over the uh, the top of the receiver then that's great the cantilever will allow you to do that if you want to put it right up to your eyes so that you keep getting smashed in the eye every time you shoot if that's your thing whatever hey I don't want to judge <laughs> but you can do that too uh, you can just spin that cantilever around so kind of interesting that's a little bit of, uh, of um, uh, flexibility there uh, both optics weigh about the same, around seven ounces, give or take an ounce. So not not heavy by by any means. Uh, both have about the same amount of brightness. Um, with the Vortex Strike Fire, again, the, which is sort of the the uh, the bar to be measured as far as something like NC Star is concerned, uh, the Vortex Strike Fire is kind of interesting. It has a, a very bright dot, but it has a bit of a halo to it. And I don't know if that's intentional or not, uh, but. You know, it's just there, and the NC Star is quite sharp—a nice sharp dot—and it's um, it's just as bright. So, uh, what else do we've got? Um, yeah, and you've got the extra color, which is blue on the NC Star. And I tried the blue 
um, the blue dot, and I actually found it to be kind of cool. The blue is very uncharacteristic of anything else you're looking at. If you're in, in foliage, the green is, it may or may not get lost depending on how bright it is. Uh, the red typically doesn't get lost. I mean, I don't know, during sunset or something, off. who knows, right? But the blue is kind of fun. I will admit that. So both of them are equally as sharp and equally as bright. Now the controls, there's a little bit of a story here. So with my Vortex Strike Fire, uh, you have a rubberized control panel here and you have basically buttons for everything. So it's kind of a control package here on the side. And the controls are very flexible. You have a button, which is the power button. You can change from red to green with one push of the button. Uh, you can turn the optic on and off, of course. And then you have brightness up and down. And you also have a button for night vision. Now, if you guys are not familiar with what night vision is for, when you hit the night vision button, it looks like the dot disappears. But what it basically does is it goes to its absolute lowest uh, level of brightness. And the reason for that is if you've ever had night vision goggles on or any kind of night vision optic, you know, even on night vision, I find I have an EOTech, and even on the night vision setting on the EOTech, with night vision on, it just, it's almost blinding. It, it actually screws up the rest of your vision, so the lower the better. So it does have a night vision button. I don't know, are we all running around night vision? Um, probably not, so I don't know if that's of any value to you. But I will say this, the, the Vortex uh, is malfunctioning on me. Um, I've had the scope turn itself off while I'm shooting. Um, I've had the function of the power button change. Basically, you press and release to change colors. Basically, I'm pressing and releasing, it changes colors. A little while later after shooting, I press and release and it turns this, the sight on and off. So there's something loose and something screwed up in there. Um, a little bit disappointing, yeah. But, you know, we'll talk about warranty and stuff after. Now, on the other hand, and this is actually quite important, controls on the NC Star. Well, NC Star has been using this real stat type control for a long time. And it's not intuitive when you're actually holding the rifle to make any adjustments. You gotta take come off target, you know, have a look, start spinning, you know, figure out where the dot is and then start spinning uh, you know to get the, the proper um, setting that you want. Now I will say this this real stats setup, I would have a hard time thinking that this would ever malfunction. This would ever break. I mean it's it's pretty primitive. And they've been using that system for a long time, so I think they're probably good at it. It doesn't fail, and that's why they've continued on. So very non-complex uh, system there. Maybe that's good. I don't know. It very well could be. So the control's not as flexible, a little bit more, I don't know, difficult to deal with, I would say. So, but again, they haven't failed on me, and <laughs> I guess that's kind of the, the true test. Uh, power source. So this is something that's important to me too. So you've got the Vortex Strike Fire again, higher level optic. Uh, how does that compare to our less expensive optic? Well, the Vortex Strike Fire uses a CR2 battery. And I was kind of disappointed to be honest when I found that out because CR, CR2s are a little bit less common than 123s. And I don't know, they'd probably be able to tell me why they use a CR2 instead of a 123. Um, but in any case, those types of batteries tend to have a lot more capacity, and there's only one battery that's, that's being needed, and you can see it here carried along the top. Um, now, the reason why you use a CR123 or a CR2 or any of these types of uh, you know, medical device batteries or for other devices like that, special, specialty batteries, is that they have a lot of capacity. So for the Vortex Strike Fire, um, it delivers on your expectation that this battery is going to last a long time. This is still the first battery I've ever put in it. I've had this scope for probably a, a year and a half. So uh, apparently I wrote this down, hold on. So it's supposed to, on full brightness red, which takes a lot of power because it's it takes uh, two or three times the power to see red, uh, light that's red, and, and get the same um, uh, brightness as it is for green, right? So you get 130 hours of full brightness on red for one CR2. And, uh, but if it's green, you'll get 420 hours. So that's a long time. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with that. That's, that's pretty good. And then 7,200 hours if it's a night vision, which is basically as low as it possibly can go. Um, the only, for, for people like you and me, normal people, the problem with the night vision setting is sometimes you won't, you'll think that the optic's off and it's still running. But 72 hours is a long time. 
Uh, I think there's also a shut off here, a 10 hour or five hour shut off or something like that. Now, this is sort of where the NC star starts to fall down because now you have this rheostat set up that they've been using forever. They use it on a lot of their products and it uses a CR2032. So that's like that big flat watch battery looking thing. It's bigger than the watch battery obviously, right? But the flat ones. I've been looking around to try to figure out what the battery life on that is. Um, I can't find it anywhere. So if you guys know what the battery life is like on something like this, please put it in the comments and, and uh, help me out there. But I can't see it being that long. So that's sort of my, and with the real stat, it's impossible to put a, a, a shut off there because you're actually turning it. There's no electronics in there. It's a physical connection. So if you forget to turn this thing off, you know, you're done. It's just going to run the battery out. Uh, now, what, what is good though is that CR2032s, you can get it like the dollar store or whatnot. So you could buy 20 cheap ones. And if you happen to leave it on, it's not the end of the world. Whereas CR2s, man, if you went to Home Depot or, or Walmart or something to buy them, you know, they're like nine bucks or I don't know, whatever. Expensive, right? So that's kind of a, a big difference. So battery life is, is something important. I don't want to have to carry a whole bunch of batteries and I don't want to change them every time I shoot either, right? So um, if anybody knows how long these batteries last, I'd like to know. So the controls and the battery life, there's a big difference between an entry level optic and something a little bit more advanced and higher quality like the Vortex. Uh, both have coated lenses and both have reflected coating on the uh, objective lens side. So that's, the, this, that's this side, right, closest to the muzzle. So uh, why is that reflective? Well, for one, you don't want light coming in on the objective lens side. And uh, some people will say when you get deployed, you don't want this big red dot showing all the time. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to be deployed anytime soon. And I think most people that would buy a Vortex Strike Fire or the NC Star Scope, they're not going to be deployed anytime soon either side. So it's not a big deal. Um, mostly just to keep that light out of there to, so you can see the dot properly and to create some reflective surface on the inside too so we can uh, get a nice clear picture. Um, and now both, now here's something and I'll, a little bit of a complaint. So both of them have flip up uh, lens covers. Uh, the reason why these are flipped up on my Vortex is since day one they won't stay down. Never. So why is this a problem for me? Well, it's disappointing. Yeah, they're rubberized, that's great, uh, but they just won't stay closed no matter what. No matter what I do to them, they won't stay closed. So now I end up getting my lens probably right now is, yeah, totally filthy because I just can't keep them closed. And you think for, for a $200 optic that they could make lens covers that stay closed. If you look at the NC Star ones, they are really, really nice. So NC, uh, NC Star, give Vortex a call and uh, tell them how to make lens covers because man, look at that. And they just, they snap nice. They're not too hard to press, yet they're not too hard to release. They're, they're actually really, really well uh, made. So lens covers, I'm a little disappointed in my strike fire on that one. But uh, NC Star definitely hit the mark. Uh, and last, but certainly not least, warranty. Now, NC Star uh, claims to have a lifetime warranty on defects of material and workmanship. If you are returning that optic uh, before 90 days uh, after your purchase, uh, it won't cost you any money to, to submit it for repair or replacement. But remember, it's materials or workmanship. So if you fall down and, you know, drop your gun, it hits a rock or whatever, now it doesn't work anymore, it's not going to be covered. Um, so, I don't know. After 90 days, you can still return it for the lifetime of the optic, but it's going to cost you a $10 handling fee. Plus, I, I don't know exactly what goes on with the shipping there, because I really haven't returned anything to a manufacturer before, honestly. Now, when it comes to Vortex, that's where uh, it's a lot different. And I'm going to be going through this whole process with Vortex, because my lens caps won't stay down and my control package is destroyed. I don't know, it was kind of screwed up from day one, so maybe I just got a bad one. But um, with Vortex, it's a little bit different. Lifetime, unlimited, no fault, whatever, no receipt required. Basically, you just ship it to them and they'll replace it. That's what it says on their website. Uh, I didn't find any contrary information out on the internet about that, uh, but that seems to be what their policy is, which is great. I'm going to be sending this one back to them because I want to stick with Vortex. Uh, they make a lot of really high quality optics, so I, I want this to work. I want this to, <laughs> as I said, I think I just got a bad one, so I'd like to return it. 
And what I will do is I will report back and maybe even make a video on what my experience was with, uh, with their warranty. And um, because on their website they have some like 150 comments and they're all five stars, not a single four star or, or below, right? So uh, we'll see. But anyway, warranty might be a, you know, a, a real concern. Um, the one thing I will say about a really inexpensive optic that does work, uh, I will say that that represents very low risk. If, if something happens to that, you fall down, you break it or whatever, you know, you can buy another one. It's not a big deal. With Vortex, I'll, I'll check out their warranty. Uh, if they do give me a, a, a new one or fix this one, I'm happy to just to get it fixed. I mean, it wasn't, wasn't cheap. Um, so, uh, I mean, that's, I guess that limits your risk too. I'll just be without the optic uh, while that gets, uh, gets done. So that's about it. Hopefully I've covered everything. Uh, if you guys have experience with the Vortex Strike Fire or the NC Star Red, Green, and Blue dot site with cantilever mount, uh, please put some information in the, uh, in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Don't forget, support the NFA. The fight for, uh, uh, against the reclassification of firearms is not done. I've got all my NFA gear on. No compromise. No compromise this time. So please support the NFA and uh, hope you enjoyed it and we will see you next time.